Okay, so welcome to our dispensing number two, Pharmaceutical Care 203. So this is an orientation for you to really grasp the essence and main outcome and focus of our dispensing number two on medication-related problems, medication safety, medication counseling, and other pharmacy services. Uh, for those who it is the first time that I actually encountered with, I am Dr. Erwin martinez Fallier. I'm the Director for Internationalization and Linkages Office uh, and a professor in Pharmacy Department in San Pedro College. And also I am the Visiting Professor from Bournemouth University, United Kingdom. So I am your professor for this particular subject, Dispensing 2 with the subject code Pharmaceutical Care 203 on medication-related problems, medication safety, medication counseling, and other pharmacy services. So there are three, uh, four main areas then that we'll be able to tackle. One would be all about drug-related problem, and I think this is the main focus uh, in terms of our class on relating what are some of related issues of our patient with regards to the medication. And when, try, when we try to analyze with a prescription, sometimes there are like drug-drug interactions. Sometimes it will encounter into the polypharmacy of our related patient, whether uh, our patient may have also uh, a lot of comorbidities and a lot of diseases, like a patient who is having diabetes, meron din siyang hypertension. Sometimes it is a, a twin diseases no? uh, when having with hypertension and also with related uh, diseases. Sometimes our patient may have added up from diabetes to hypertension having have pains, like for example, with uh, certain like arthritis because of you know uh, eating too much of related food that can cause a, a increase of uric acid. And some of the female patients may have osteoporosis because as we all know, women may have high probabilities, high prevalence in terms of uh, osteoporosis. No? So it's getting more and more complicated diseases as you become more older no, as a patient. No? And this is where our, uh, our main job as a pharmacist will lie into the medication-related problem. And this is the main focus why we discuss about dispensing number two, because this is actually the main focal point why we exist as a pharmacist to look into some of the drug-related problems of our client, of our patient. No? So like, for example, difficulty in terms of swallowing is one of the, you know, the problem uh, of our patient then to take with certain medication, especially if that would be a, a big calcium, you know, uh, calcium uh, supplements uh, for our patient, which are quite bigger, you know, and other medications that have difficulty for our patients, especially the geriatric patients no? and some pediatric patients. So uh, we, we sometimes try to uh, advise that to actually uh, change in terms of certain dosage form from a solid dosage form into a liquid dosage form. And that will actually increase in terms of the adherence of our certain clients or certain patients. No? So these are very important issues uh, relating to adherence in, in terms of therapeutic efficacy, uh, relating into a simple uh, frequency and dosage form of uh, problems of our client or our patient. No? Number two is all about medication safety. And as we all know, this is the focal point of why we exist also as a pharmacist. No? Uh, because it relates into medication-related problems, wherein it may also have a lot of like drug-drug interactions, drug-food interaction, or drug-laboratory interaction, or even drug-herbal interaction 
that may cause a lot of maybe untoward effects uh, to our patient or perhaps a single dose or a single medication or in concomitant with other medication that may cause side effect no? or it may increase a lot of untoward effect of a certain medication. So it may actually lie on to medication safety. Another example of this medication safety are those drugs that may have lower no, or narrow in terms of therapeutic window no? uh, that may be, you know, you, you need really to have uh, adjustments, monitoring uh, of a certain drug, especially with anticoagulant medication like, for example, with warfarin, uh, comadine, no, and other uh, other drugs which may have its narrow therapeutic windows. And that is mainly the, the responsibility of the pharmacist then to assure that the drug is not only effective, it's not only in quality, but also in safety. No? Uh, it must be the responsibility then of the pharmacist no, to assure that it is actually safe. And we have a lot of interventions that can be done also, and that will be discussed in our dispensing number two. What are some of the interventions to make it sure that our certain drugs uh, or the, the, the drugs that are in our shelves, in our boutique, no, are actually can be, you know, can be monitored properly at the same time. We have some interventions that can be easily can be seen by the pharmacist or pharmacy pharmacy technician or pharmacy aid no? uh, that you know it may have this kind of sound alike look alike medication that will be discussed to you in our in our subject now it's very interesting to take note on uh, the number three which you already discussed in your uh, dispensing number one this is quite advanced because we will actually go into polypharmacy a very complicated case complicated in the sense that most of our patients in the community, in the hospital setting, sometimes multiple prescriptions or multiple drugs no? that may have like uh, five to 10 to 20 medications at the same time. Now in just like, for example, in the morning of the patient, it may take around five to 10 medications in one shot, no? a cocktail of certain medications. So how you be able to counsel it one by one to your patient? There are a lot in terms of like challenges in terms of counseling with our client. And that really matters on what are the techniques and how really we can counsel our patient well. No? Whether a patient may have difficulty in terms of talking like deaf and muted patient, how we be able to counsel them. Like for example, patient may have geriatric patient that may be hard-headed in terms of uh, taking with a medication or may have difficulty in terms of adherence or patient, geriatric patient may have difficulty, uh, have a lot of complaints or a mother or a father of a child or a caregiver that may actually have a lot of complaints regarding the child, especially with uh, a potential side effect. No? So, these are a lot of issues that to be able to confront in terms of medication counseling. No? And this is one of the responsibility of the pharmacist according to our latest law, which is RA10918, a pharmacy law, no? in terms of the responsibility, the required responsibility of the pharmacist to counsel with our patient or with our clients. No? And lastly, number... Uh, number four is actually on pharmacy services. As we all know that our, our pharmacy services are quite expanded already. So this is actually what we call as extended pharmacy services. And in our discussion, it's very interesting that it is not only dispensing is our, uh, our role then uh, in terms of our practice in the pharmacy setting. But we have actually a multi facade role then uh, as a pharmacist. So we extended already our services. Like, for example, medication therapy, uh, therapy 
no uh, clinics no adherence for our patient uh, and also other services like smoking cessation program uh, a normal blood pressure or um, you know um, having a glucose test for our client is part and parcel of our pharmacy services and a lot more there's a lot of things that we can do in our normal boutique, no? in our hospital setting. So it's not only exclusive that we are in the four corners and we are in the air con room of our boutique or in our pharmacy, but then we try to reach out to the community because we remember as a pharmacist, we are actually a, a more accessible healthcare professional. And we need really to extend because remember, that a normal BP in the in the barangay may take a while, no? It may take a while, and the challenges then of COVID nineteen, especially with vaccination, and how can we as a pharmacist then accessible in our community setting, especially with vaccination services to the community. So it's very interesting that you are here in our class to tackle about the dispensing role. Uh, of a pharmacist and you are actually very fortunate in the philippine setting because we have actually the right in terms of dispensing and as we all know that other countries like in malaysia and other countries that may not have its particular dispensing rights in their country no? even doctors can actually even dispense in other countries so you are very very fortunate because we have an association of pharmacists the philippine pharmacist association that actually protects our rights as a pharmacist no? so that is actually the main responsibility there now uh, we are also very fortunate in our dispensing too because this particular course is not only an application of different concepts about dispensing practices, but this is actually a correlation of what is going on in our laws, guidelines, policies that govern us throughout the, throughout the process then of the multi assay role of being as a professional pharmacist in our practice in our community and also in the hospital setting. And we'll be able to tailor it in our real scenario, what is going on in our community and hospital setting there. And our innovative way on how we'll be able to have all the services in our community and tailor fit it also on what is needed counseling. We'll be able to plan in terms of our community in hospital setting, we'll be able to plan uh, what would be the therapeutic goal that we want to go into our patient and a proper supervision then to our client. No? And in, at the end of the day, when you are a pharmacist already, you'll be able to change the landscape of our practice. No? Na, na, and that must not be the, the main call then of the farmers to become a tindera, a glorified sales lady, as they may actually say. But as you go along, engage with the patient, you'll be able to ensure and assure that you are giving the patient with the correct medication, with the correct patient, with the right dose, with the right frequency, no? that you'll be able to assure that it is actually safe and effective to our client. No? And the patient will be able to appreciate them at the end of the day that, hey, nandyan pala ang pharmacist ko, that will be able to supervise with the medication that I am actually taking. No? So this is the main course descriptions that all of us will be able to understand the value of the dispense. It's not that Every, you know, uh, in the community practice, in the community setting, even our uh, pharmacy technician or pharmacy aide can actually dispense. That's a reality. No? 
But then, uh, as we all know, what is the difference of you and actually your pharmacy technician? It's all about the touch of engagement with your client or with your patient. No? Counseling. No? And assuring that it is actually safe and effective. No? And the main nationality of this course is that we be able to develop you as a student in terms of your skill in dispensing a, a, a particular prescription, a dosage form, or even medication review that be able to ensure that it is safe. By proper planning, and of course, the correct analysis of the prescription, and of course, thorough interpretation of the prescription that you may actually give the correct drug to the correct patient at the correct uh, frequency and dosage form. No? So these are the main rationale. So development of skill. So how can we actually develop you with a skill aside from your laboratory in the lecture setting? And that is actually with a lot of what we call as new strategies in the teaching methodology for you to develop. And that is actually with our case-based learning and problem-based learning that to be able to actually put you into a practice now wherein you will receive a lot of cases, prescriptions, problems that you'll be able to solve in your daily practice as a pharmacy student. Meron po tayong mga simulated patients also that you'll be able to engage you no, with the real scenario. Okay? The main focus then of the main course is to assess for the different kinds of prescription that be able to provide quality, safe, and effective medication. So are we be able to assure that uh, once you actually pass to the subject, that you be able to actually correctly analyze the prescription. So we have an exit uh, exam that it will be your final exam with the OSCE to make it sure that we actually produce a graduate when you are actually in your community and hospital internship that we be able to assure in San Pedro College Pharmacy Department that you be able to have a correct medication with a proper analysis, with a proper plan to your patient, you be able to analyze prescription and all at the end of the day. No? So that would be your out, that would be the outcome. And we'll be able to also differentiate when you try to compound with the medication that the particular ingredients may not have this kind of physical, chemical, or even therapeutic incompatibilities along the process of extemporaneously compounding with the medications. No, so that would be one of the outcomes that we have. So the main schedule for the following weeks, this will be a, a this will be a very exciting moment for all of us. No? One would be this week, you will actually have a pre-recorded video that uh, you need to actually view topic number one, part one, about uh, analyzing prescription for a geriatric patient and also about a pediatric patient and lactating uh, mothers and pregnant women. No? So that would be topic number one, part one, and also part two. And that will be summarized in your week number three uh, before we're going to start with another topic. So in your synchronous that to be on lectures but uh, some of it will actually be another methodology which what we call as flip classroom in our prelim uh, we will actually experience what we call as flip classroom where in uh, most of our lecture are actually pre-recorded no, from topic number one until topic number three on different parts. Wherein 
the particular uh, pre-recorded videos that you'll be able to view before the class, you are expected on that. And during the class, we'll be able to emphasize only important points based upon the lecture notes that has been given already to you and then discuss more on a student-centered approach, which is actually a lot of activities that will answer your case base and problem base. This lecture time will also be uh, a time for you in terms of for any probable questions during the time of our, uh, our engagements. Okay, so that would be answered by me as one of the experts for this dispensing number two. Now, in the assessment of your prelim from week number one till week number six, there will be a series of cases. For next week, you are expected in our asynchronous, you are expected to answer CBL number one and CBL number two. And then prepare yourself also with the My Dispense platform. Okay, you need to register also in our virtual simulation, which is our My Dispense. But then you are given actually two weeks of time from your lecture until the asynchronous, and that will be answered after two weeks of time for your PBL so that you'll be able to have more time to answer and discuss with your group regarding the case-based learning. So uh, take note, in your prelim exam will be September 20 to 24, 2021. And uh, on week number seven, we'll have a webinar. And also week number eight will be a quiz via with our, uh, via our Quipper and other modalities. And week number nine until uh, week number 11, that will be the time in terms of uh, in preparation for your midterm examination on November 3 to 6. Then on, we will start again with another uh, topics on medication-related problems and physical chemical properties and incompatibilities. Take note. On week number 15 and week number 16, you will be engaged with a mock OSCE for your lecture, identifying your skills in terms of the, uh, the, the particular subject matter. Now, on week number nine, take note, this is quite very exciting because we will actually host the second My Dispense Olympiad which we already started last, uh, last year with the previous uh, students with regards to the first My Dispense. And I'm sure that you will still be the champion, I hope so, no? for this second My Dispense Olympiad. Okay? So, and lastly, on week number 17 will be the physical chemical properties and then week 18 will be your final examination on a written format, okay? That will cover from the top till the bottom of it with your final exam subtopics. So please do register with your My Dispense uh, using with uh, the particular format that will be given to you uh, by your class representative, okay? So that's, I, that's all from my part, and thank you very much. Let's open the floor for any quest, probable uh, questions. You can even chat it in the, in the chat box if you have any probable uh, questions.